what is now the deadliest natural disaster in the state's history. The staggering toll, at least 80 people now confirmed dead, but that number is expected to climb, with hundreds still unaccounted for. Once vibrant communities reduced to rubble and ashes, many comparing the scenes to a war zone. The state attorney general now opening an investigation into Maui's alert system after complaints that there wasn't enough warning for people to escape the flames. Many still desperately searching for missing loved ones. And four days after the disaster, we're hearing the harrowing stories of survival. This woman managed to survive eight hours in the water and is now helping others at a shelter. Over 80% of the nearly 3,000 buildings exposed to the fire were damaged or destroyed, and most of those were residential, leaving thousands homeless and in urgent need of shelter. Disaster officials saying today that the cost of rebuilding Maui County could exceed $5 billion. We have team coverage tonight, the devastation, the relief efforts, and the hope across the island. Tonight, Hawaii's raging wildfires are now the deadliest natural disaster in state history. At least 80 lives lost on Maui, and officials are confident that number will rise. The attorney general announcing a comprehensive review of Maui's evacuation policies, including systems for notifying residents to get out during emergencies, notifications many here say they never received. It's been only four days since firestorms fueled by hurricane force winds torched entire swaths of this island paradise. And the efforts to contain those wildfires still continuing. We're in the Kula neighborhood already ravaged by fire and you can see the water dropping helicopters working around the clock to still put out hot spots. For many who fled the disaster zones, still an agonizing search for housing and supplies. Did you guys get any alerts that a fire was coming towards your neighborhood? We didn't have any alerts about the fire. We just knew about the storm. Kevin Campbell and his fiance Tasha Anderson, who's nine months pregnant, had no time to pack any belongings as the smoke and flames roared towards their Lahaina home. We grabbed our dog and the cat and um, our and passports yeah. and friends. The couple is now desperately searching for a steady place to live. Tasha's doctor telling her their baby boy is due any day. Doctor said yesterday he feels like he could come anytime this week just because of the stress. This is a photo of their destroyed home, only a melted roof lying flat on the ground. Historic Lahaina Town, now a hellscape. Our Will Carr getting an up-close look. The fire burning not only this courthouse, but also the historic banyan tree behind it, the tree that everybody comes to see. It's the largest in the United States, 150 years old. The flames burning everything on this block. Nearly 1,900 homes are damaged or destroyed, according to officials. Just outside Lahaina, some residents are frustrated that they can't return to their homes after being told they could. Our Melissa Adan is there. Hundreds and hundreds of cars are lined up along the road waiting for that opportunity to go back to their communities. It's been four days, and they're awaiting a grim journey to see what's left of their homes. I feel 100% that the, that the county officials and the police and the fire department have blood on their hands. There's no way that those poor people who were stuck in Lahaina did not deserve better communication. And it wasn't only Lahaina. Flames from a different wildfire 20 miles away ripping through homes here in Kula. I think that's my stove right there. That was my kitchen. Akane Joseph and her mother Mika fleeing with their family as the fire exploded in size. We had like maybe five minutes. We just, five minutes. Yeah, you had five, five minutes to, to gather your family and, and yeah. get out. Akane's father spent decades slowly building this multi-generational home with his bare hands. This video shows the two-story house before the fire made of eucalyptus and redwood. Now it's all gone. It felt like safety cool. and it felt like home. And you know, there's things you think you'll always have, you know, like things you think you'll give it to your children? You know, pictures. You know, pictures of my parents. Like, I, I, I grabbed one wedding picture of my parents from my wall, and I felt silly doing it, because I was like, we're going to come back. And now it's the only one I have. But in their family and community, they find strength and hope. This is done. Yeah, we're so a nothing, <laughs> nothing we can change. We, it I can't go back. Mm. But we had to go home. That family, like so many here, insisting they will rebuild.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.